Ave Maria. Need I introduce this song to you? Check it out if you've never heard it before. And thanks for checking out the channel. Now let's get into the technique. The first part has a lot of real estate to cover, so let's just jump right in. You start in the fourth position. And then you're playing the three on the harmonic A. You can actually start with the harmonic and then depress. Fourth position. Then one here. Here's the big one. I believe I didn't do that. I did a four zero one. I go back to first position after the big slide from and back. That is how you can practice it. Just practice shifting up and down. A technique for those of you that are first learning the thumb position. And if this really motivates you to learn the thumb position, when you shift up, like for instance, something super high like that, well, medium high like that um, what you are doing is you're losing your thumb the thumb is lost I'll explain this in a different video but I'm going to talk about a physical cue point right there it's hidden all cello players use this spot here everybody look at professional cellists look at these old cellos they all have a faded spot even mine is a little bit faded here the varnish comes off because we use it as a physical cue point because here we have the elbow at a certain angle and the thumb behind the neck. But when we're up here, we have the sort of the side of the body. But when we move up here, we lose the thumb, which is so important, it becomes a finger. This finger is completely useless, unless of course you're really turning in. And so what we do is we use this part of your hand. So when you shift back up, memorize not only what this feels like, the shape, but what that feels like on your your wrist. Let's move on to the fourth line. Here's the beginning. Shifting two whole steps. Then remaining that big, staying there. Crossing over to the D. Then placing that three on the E natural. Continuing forward, we are in the one, two, three, four, fifth line in the Ave Marias. I start with the two on the harmonic. The reason? Because it plays a strong role in the next part. Next measure. See that? The C and E flat are perfectly in the same shape. So just remain that one, two, shifting up. And then, yes, do a little bit of a cheat there. Shifting up to thumb position right here on the F natural. Placing the three. Then shifting the whole hand up, one whole step. For the A on the D. Very close. C and B are very close. You're literally pinching your thumb and your first finger together and reaching that, that three. Then continuing back to the first finger. Then the second on the G on the D. Don't overreach that. Shifting back, you can do a two, two slide. And then let your thumb release. And at the 
very end here. Slide up. It's such a beautiful piece and I suggest that you really work on your thumb position to make it sound wonderful. It's quite exposed. Now let's talk about the second part. The first entire line is all in first position. You're doing a legato over four notes. Make it nice and smooth your transitions between your strings. You can practice them separately and then do them by twos and then do them by fours separately. Then by twos. And then by fours. You have to be very even with the weight of your bow throughout the entire four note legatos. Continuing on to the third line is where we have the very first shift. The third line is right here, shifting up to second position. Slide back to that B flat. Then here, you can do a four minus one, three, or four minus one four, whichever you're more comfortable with. I will do the four minus one four, which is not marked. Now I will do the four minus one three, which is marked in that fourth measure of the third line. Continuing on, we're going to a lot of lines here. One, two, three, four, five. The fifth line of the first page. Second measure, excuse me, first measure. Shift up to third position. Stay in that position for that entire purple bracket. to play that really nice and smooth bar, that 1-1 one, one transition. Then, that's a zero, shift back. Last line, one, two, three, fourth measure. Here, again, purple bracket means third position. Zero gives you the opportunity to shift back. And then you finish it all quite simply. Last, of course, is in third position. One technique that I want to remind the second part of doing is to keep those fingers on the string as much as you possibly can do. So let's just jump right back to the beginning and see how that's done. Very first measure. See the second finger lies down. Then. Usually I have one. Usually I have one. Typically I have one, sometimes even two fingers down at the same time as playing this. You're playing these sort of broken chords as you go throughout the entire piece. It's so beautiful, so exposed, and I really hope you enjoy learning it. So thanks for watching. Bye-bye.